It's no secret that I often wander the woodlands and environments alone while at night. As you can imagine, I often come across a lot of orb weavers reconstructing their webs for the evening. Naturally, I find myself captivated by these architects and before I know it, I've spent 30 or 40 minutes just watching them work their magic. It reminds me of a question I've heard quite often over the years. And long story short, I figured this would be a good time to address it. How you guys doing? I'm Chris Ignato and you are watching Nature Here and Now. So check this out. You see this orb weaver here? It's a decent sized spider with this giant wagon wheel shaped web, right? Well, I want to put a certain question to rest for some of you viewers, and that is how do these spiders start their webs across great spans or expanses? Like some down south you'll see Nephila spiders building their webs across streams and rivers, and it's like how do they do that? Do they anchor their web to the tree, walk down to the ground, and then carry that silk along the ground, and then go up another tree and then pull that rope in, and that's their first bridge support? Or are they doing something else? Well, over the years, I came up with several theories. That was one of them. Uh, another theory was when these spiders are very young, and many spiders, they do something that's called ballooning. And that's where the babies will crawl on top of like a log or a post or anything. And they stick their little abdomen up in the air and shoot out several strands of silk for many feet, okay? Those strands of silk eventually catch the wind and carry them off like a parachute. Wherever those spiderlings land is where they start their new life. It's actually really neat because they found spiderlings up in the upper atmosphere, floating along, uh, still alive. And then they found them in the outer atmosphere, frozen. Uh, it's kind of neat. Well, one day I actually sat down and watched a spider start her new web. And that is exactly what they do. They sit on, you know, in this case, they sit on a fence post and she will put out several strands of silk and just let them keep going. And the wind will eventually catch them and there'll be sometimes a little bit of a glue at the end and it lands on, on say like a tree branch or something. Then they quickly scurry across, anchor that down and they pull a stronger strand of silk and they use that as their support. They usually take down the first one and recycle it later on because silk has a lot of protein in it and that's a precious commodity. But anyhow, that's literally how they start their first struts and supports. They just sit there in a position, uh, cast out a lot of silk, let the wind catch it, it lands on some anchor point, they crawl along that anchor point and fasten a stronger strand of silk and they start the foundation for these beautiful, magnificent orbs. Now, it wouldn't be fair of me if I didn't share this clip with you, but years ago, I was filming this spider doing that very thing. And that's when, to my surprise, I discovered I was at the other end of that line. Now, I promise you, I'm not necessarily terrified of spiders. They could just catch me off guard sometimes. And there you go. That's how orb weavers start their webs. Short video. Sorry I'm breathing weird, but uh, if I breathe harder, it's going to scare the spider away. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Chris Ignato, signing out. I almost hit the web right there. Oops.